It's been eight months since phase one of the T7 build where we took a stock T7 and made it louder, more durable and luggage friendly. Since then I've traveled more than 8,000 kilometers on and off-road while taking it out on many epic moto camping adventures. Being my first adventure motorcycle, with each ride, my bond with this beast grows stronger. With still much to learn, the more I ride, the more I uncover just how capable this machine really is, which gets me all hyped up to see how far I can push it and myself. In this episode, I'm going to take you along the modification journey along with my thought process as we build the T7 into an all-terrain machine with the end goal of traversing solo around Australia for months at a time. But before we get our hands dirty, if you want to film your motorcycle rides, then I highly recommend the Insta360 X3. By filming in a 360 degree bubble around the lens, it allows you to capture a multitude of angles from the one position so that you can set and forget knowing that all angles have been covered. Then, later in post, using either your phone or desktop studio app, you can create and choose the most interesting angles available to you. It's like having your own film crew with you all the time. To get you on your bike and filming, the Moto Mount Bundle Kit is included for free with every X3 purchase using my affiliate link in the description below. So start filming your rides the simple way and get your hands on an Insta360 X3. Thank you so much Insta360 for sponsoring this video. With that said, let's get into the build. Alrighty, it is time for phase two of the T7 build. So today's mission is to wire up this little guy. It's a USB-A, USB-C, USB port. <laughs> and it's also a voltmeter as well. It lights up blue in the middle there and tells you your voltage, which would be pretty handy. That's gonna be going right there. But to do that, this whole front end has to come off. <laughs> so it's a bit of a mofo. I don't wanna have this open all the time. Dust will get in there. It'll end up screwing everything up. I'd like to have that cover on most of the time and then use this just for, you know, emergency charging situations. So I'm gonna hardwire the wireless head charger from Quadlock. Thank you, Quadlock, for sending that out to me. The way I'm doing this, this is the old SAE plug. I think they discontinued these because they just mount directly to the battery. And I think they were sending some batteries flat. So to save the hassle, they just got rid of them. But basically all, all it is is two wires and it transfers into a USB. So I'm gonna cut these off thunk, and just wire it up to accessories. The indicator, so Kellerman sent me their wicked indicators. So there's a stop tail indicator. And they're a bit of a different you know, design compared to the, um, the addos that I've got on the Scrambler, which are right there, the tiny little things. It's always gonna be a funny situation mounting indicators. Um, I'm not sure how this is gonna work. Removing these, I don't know if there's like a little plate that I can just use to drill this in or whatever. Eh, yeah, we'll suss it out. But first, we are going to start with the hardest thing, uh, the biggest job, which is pulling everything off here. So we've got to get rid of the plastics each side, whole headlight has to come out. There is a video that I'm gonna be following along. I'll link it in the description below. Everything comes out and it's literally, you're just left with the frame. Mofo of a job. These SRC upper crash bars can stay on though. Apparently you don't need to remove the crash bars to remove the plastics, which is wicked. So, so handy. There it is. It looks pretty daunting, hey? It was actually not that bad. It was pretty good. It was pretty easy to pull it all apart. Very accessible. All these screws, all these guys. Super accessible, very easy. Shout out to Orb Surfer. So I was just following this guy's tutorial. I'll link him in the description below as well. So now here is the hole under here. Boop. So I just gotta file that out a little bit. And then the auxiliary accessories. That's the plug there. So there's positive and negative already to go. I'm pretty sure that's fused as well. So I'll wire, wire this up to that. I'll wire the quad lock up to that as well. I'm not gonna be using them both at the same time. So we won't overload the circuit or anything. That's the indicator plug right there. Um, so I'm gonna cut off the plug for the OEM indicators just so I can use the original and plug that straight in. B&B Off-Road Engineering. Thanks again, guys. They sent me out the little underboy. The OG one that they sent out to me before suits the OEM indicators. Pull the old ones out, put the new ones in and they fit absolutely perfect. And I hit them up just asking if they had something without them. I have this one, so you can put the indicators there. But those holes are too big for my indicators. So again, it's gonna be another, another something, another something to do.
So, a couple of things since I've seen you guys last. One, this is my new space. It's a little bit tighter than the warehouse. If you'd like to know why I moved out of here, I have an episode either up or coming out soon. I'm not sure yet, don't know when this is dropping. But yeah, this is the new garage space. I haven't finished, I'm still setting up. It's just been chaotic. But anyways, the other thing I wanted to show you guys was my new tires. I've gone for the Shinko 804, 805s, exactly the same as the old scrambler. I like them, I really like them. I can go corner to peg to peg on the scrambler. Obviously not on this, because they're so damn high. And there's the old Pirelli Rally STRs. There's nothing wrong with these. They've still got enough, they've still got a bit of tread on them. But I just wanted something a bit more girthy. And you know, it looks pretty cool. Today is handlebar day. Very pumped. Renthal sent me at their fat bar. Nice and strong, very, very sexy, very nice indeed. I bought the Oxford heated grips. Um, we're in winter now here in Victoria, so heated grips are a must. The double take mirrors, so we'll be putting that on, replacing the stock ones, which suck. And of course, bark busters as well to replace the original factory ones, which are also garbage. So yeah, bit to do today. Very excited, let's go. I actually made a rookie error. Camel ADV sent me out the, the fix, the brake pedal, their one finger clutch, and the anti bobble head. Like an absolute idiot, I deleted the footage by accident. I didn't transfer the footage onto my hard drive and I formatted the card. Rookie error, but super easy installation, nothing crazy required to fit the brake pedal up, and this thing works a treat. For you guys that own T7s, I'm sure the majority of you are watching this video, we know that the brake is quite spongy. This, that, that, that's, that's pretty much all the movement. And you can just pretty much put your big toe on there and really just feel it out a little bit, change all your adjustments there as well to make it a little bit more stiffer or softer. Absolutely game changer. And it's nice that it's all tucked in in a way. I already fell off a few times and I had already start to, started to bend the original lever. So this thing's nice and strong. And the instruction videos for the installation, so good. Everything's nice and detailed. It took no time to fit it up. Same as the one finger clutch. That's pretty much it, just there. Not a big job either, just make some adjustments. You start off in the middle hole there. If you wanna make it a bit harder, you put it into that one. If you wanna make it a bit lighter, you put it into the one back there. But the middle, the middle guy seems the way to go for me for the moment. And it actually makes the friction point, it makes the zone a little bit longer, a little bit wider. So you have a little bit more control over, over your friction point as well. It's not so jerky or twitchy. The anti-bobble head works a damn treat. As we know, these, if you have like a GPS unit mounted up this like mine, yeah, you know it wobbles around quite a bit when you're off-road and everything. This stiffens everything up, braces everything up nicely, and it also stops the headlight from jiggling around so much. Again, super easy installation. They've done, they've done an incredible job. So thank you so much, Kemmel ADV, for sending those out to me. And as for the rest of it, you might notice the bash plate. I changed the color of it. I didn't really like the whole sticker thing going on, so I just got it powder coated black. This is how the indicators turned out, which I'm pretty happy with. I didn't really, I didn't do anything really. I just took the, the cover off. I don't care about these little holes and stuff like that. But I think the shape of them, I think they turned out really nice and they're super bright when they're on as well. And this is the back. I actually use the uh, indicator holes to run the wire through. And this is all just sort of sitting there. There's no brackets or anything. It just came out really nicely some tubing as well just to protect it all from rubbing on the metal surfaces. And then I just found these little brackets, 
mounted them up, sprayed them, uh, spray painted them black. And I think they look, they look pretty good as well. They suit the style of a lot of the bike, which I really like. The Lone Rider foot pegs, I really dig. I have a set of springs, some universal springs coming. I've dropped this a few times and you can see what happens without the springs in them. There's that little bit of a bit of a flat spot there. But the surface area on the pegs as well, it's just a nice platform. You feel really nice and stable and it doesn't hurt your foot or anything. And they do twist and you can adjust that that pivot tension, which is really cool. The Shinko 803 and 805s, I love these tires. I love the look of them. I think they're really nice and aggressive. These do still perform really well on the road and I feel like they do prefer, perform much better than the, um, the stock STRs, the Pirelli Rally STRs. I'll be doing a sand training course <laughs> in a couple of weeks time with these bad boys, so I'm curious to see how they're gonna go. But you can still hammer it on the corners. Uh, in the wet, I wouldn't go so hard. They're probably a bit worse in the wet than the um, STRs, but overall, great tire. I think they look fantastic as well. They set the bike off, make it look a bit more aggressive. Same as the front. And now for the cockpit. Here it all is. Quadlock obviously works a treat. Wireless charger, heated grips work really well. I love them. They turn off automatically. This has got the intelligent smart thingy. So, you know, they just turn off on themselves. The double take mirrors obviously are a must as well for when you're adventure riding. You just fold them in and if you drop your bike or when you drop your bike, you're not going to crack or damage anything because they just sort of, you know, that happens and you can just readjust or whatever. Yeah, double take mirrors, man. The way to go. Bark busters. I like these storm ones. They're really nice for winter riding. Keeps all the harsh elements off your hands. And of course we have the fat bar. I love it. It's a little bit different to your, to your stock bar. It's less a touring style and more of an aggressive MX sort of off-road style. I like it. It sort of gets you over the bars a little bit further and I love that they're black. I think they should be black from stock. It looks so much better. And we have the little voltmeter and that works really well as well. It's just good seeing your stuff. And I also bought the Garmin XT. I love this thing. I think it's awesome. You can be out in the middle of nowhere with no reception or whatever and this thing has your back. And having it mounted up here means that your eyes don't come off the road too much either. The crash bars, I've been putting these, these bad boys through their paces. I can't believe how well they work. The plastics are all fine. Itch, yeah, look at under there. I've dropped on the left hand side a lot more than I have on the right. So I can't even fit my fingers through this side and I can fit my whole hand on this side. But they are definitely are protecting the bike, the engine, which is wicked. So that is it for phase two of the build. Super stoked with how it's all turning out. It's all pretty functional, but still looks, I reckon it still looks the part. Massive thank you to all the brands that have um, helped build this thing. Check them all out. Links are all in the description below, along with all the video tutorials on how to pull the front end off, put all the Camel stuff all together. It's all, it's all down in the description below. If you want to check it out, go check it out. And um, stay tuned for phase three. Won't be eight months, I promise. See you guys. Woo!